Thanks for staying with us tonight here on The Ed Show. I find this a very interesting political story. Three women are using three key issues to basically stun Republicans and pull ahead in their Senate races. The Republicans expected all of these women to lose. Instead, they're out campaigning their opponents and boosting support for President Obama. Let's start with Democrat Tammy Baldwin and the Medicare debate. Baldwin is three points ahead of former Governor Tommy Thompson in Wisconsin. And here's the main reason. In May, Thompson was caught on camera promising to do away with Medicaid and Medicare. Thompson has tried to clarify the comments. It's not working. Baldwin's latest campaign ad shows her taking care of her late grandparents. She promises to leave Medicare alone. Big issue in the state. So Baldwin's proving to be a tougher candidate than the Republicans bargained for in the Badger State. But there's another surprise for the GOP. Elizabeth Warren is ahead of Republican favorite Scott Brown in Massachusetts. Warren uses Romney's 47 percent comment to go after Brown on tax fairness. Brown responds by attacking Warren's Native American heritage. His staffers, staffers were even caught on tape making racist gestures. Brown thinks he can win the election on this issue, but it's not working. Warren is ahead by five points. Her fellow Democrat in Missouri is doing even better. Senator Claire McClaskill is winning on women's issues. Remember, her opponent, Representative Todd Aiken, coined the phrase legitimate rape. He was caught on tape last Monday, last month, saying that he doesn't support fair pay for women because it hurts free enterprise. Would you like to run against that comment? McCaskill, Warren, and Baldwin are focusing on women's issues, the 47% in Medicare. It's working. And there are others. Heidi Heitkamp is in a tight race with Congressman Rick Berg in North Dakota. Mario Hirino of, uh, is ahead of Republican favorite in Hawaii and Shelley Berkeley's neck and neck in Nevada. All of these women are giving the Democrats a fighting chance at taking control of the Senate. I'm joined by Michelle Goldberg, senior contributing writer for Newsweek and The Daily Beast, and Kelly Goff, political correspondent for TheRoot.com. Well, I guess... We could say that maybe four or five months ago, we wouldn't be here having this conversation. <laughs> but it's been the war on women. It's been the middle class, the 47 percent comment. Uh, there's a host of things out there, but it's really having a down ballot effect. Uh, how scary is it, you think, Michelle, right now for the Republicans that this is just going to blow up in their face? Well, I think what's scary is that a couple of these races, as you said, are races that they really shouldn't be losing. I mean, the Todd Aiken race, most obviously. But even Wisconsin, you know, even a lot of people who really admire Tammy Baldwin thought that when Tommy Thompson won that primary, mm -hmm. you know, a very popular former governor with a kind of moderate reputation, they thought she was in a lot of trouble. And instead, she's really pulling ahead. When you see, uh, Kelly, the number of Democratic uh, w female candidates right. who are doing well. Does this help the president? I mean, it's the image business. I mean, what does it look like? Absolutely. And let me tell you why. They called 1992 the year of the woman. If you'll recall, Ed, there was that landmark year where a Dozens of, of female Democratic members of Congress were swept up in the in the Clinton year. And 20 years later, we appear to be having another one. And the reason this is good for the president is because it, it helps increase the turnout and enthusiasm among female voters. I think I mentioned before on this program that Emily's List has polling that shows that these women's issues have been having a down ballot effect and in terms of wanting getting moderate women to turn out to the polls, feel enthusiastic and feel that they're under attack and that they have to show up and fight. There are a lot of moderate women who may not have been that enthusiastic about the president. They are enthusiastic about protecting their access to birth control. They are enthusiastic about knowing that the term legitimate rape is not a legitimate term. And they are, and they are, they are enthusiastic about sending that message at the polls. So that does help Democrats up ballot. Massachusetts has never elected a woman as governor or to the United States right. Senate. Uh, and Elizabeth Warren was asked about it in the last debate. Here's a response. I wonder why you think that Massachusetts has never elected a female senator or governor? I don't know. No idea? Does it trouble you? Well, right now I'm trying to do something about that. <laughs> I mean, isn't that just a fantastic answer? <laughs> 
Well, you know, there's been a lot of studies about the one of the reasons that the gap in American political representation is so wide is because of who runs as opposed to how likely women are to win when they do run. So there's been this huge untapped kind of pool of talent that was they weren't women weren't putting themselves forward. They were less likely to be recruited. But researchers who looked at this see that when women run, they're as likely to win as as men are. What about North Dakota's race? with Heidi Heitkamp, former attorney general, up against one of the wealthiest members of Congress in Rick Berg. Uh, he came in in the Tea Party wave, but then has uh, uh, not been very popular in the state. It's a red state. She's a populist. What do you make of that race? And that's, that's, a, big, that's a big seat. That's Senator Ken look, Conrad retiring for the Senate Budget Committee. If Democrats hold on to the Senate, not only hold on Ed, but the unthinkable happens, they actually gain, which no one predicted we'd be having this conversation a few months ago. They're going to have one really impressive, or rather not impressive, politician to send a big old bouquet to, and that politician's name is Todd Akin. <laughs> and I say that because... You think he's affected all the races? It, it's sort of like a cancer that has spread in terms of you already had this talk about the, the, the attack, the war on women, right? And they say that's not true, that's bollocks, there is no such thing as a war on women, and then someone comes out and says, I'm convinced doctors are giving abortions to women who don't, aren't even pregnant, and that's one of your nominees, it becomes tough to say, no, our party doesn't have an issue with women. I don't know, call me crazy. Uh, you, you know, I've often thought that the, the, the cuts in Medicaid that have been proposed in the Ryan plan has really affected a lot of these races, because as families in America, we, 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 we try to take care of our that's parents. Right. That affects moms, you know. That I, I, I think it's that affects all, women all sudden, really a lot, and they see that and they say, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not for that. I, am I wrong on that? Oh, as much as we've been talking too about women's issues in a lot of these races, I mean, what these women are running on is, like you said, economic populism. You know, that's the core of Tammy Baldwin's message. It's the core of Elizabeth Warren's message. It's the core of the message in North Dakota, and so, and in a sense, economic populism shades over into women's right. issues because women end up being the person in charge of caring for ailing fa family members. You know, being the person in charge of health care for their children. And so, you know, they know very viscerally what it would mean to say lose Medicaid, which is paying for the nursing home of, um, sure. you know, of, of their aging it's parents. It's a brutal cut. Well, it, it doesn't sit well. Well, in my column for the route I talked about after the debate, for all of the, the bad news for Democrats from that debate, the one thing I noticed is if you counted how many times the president said the words education, health care, why is that, Ed? Because when you look at the polls, women voters are more likely to vote on things like health care, on sure. education, on Medicare, for the reasons you're talking about, because they're the ones who end up having responsibility for kids and elderly parents. So you're totally spot on. Kelly Goff, Michelle Goldberg, great to have you with us tonight Thank on The Ed Show. There's a lot more coming up in the next half hour of The Ed Show. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Now, my plan is different. It involves 41 basic elements, six, six abrupt reversals of position, and three outright lies. It would be funny if it wasn't so true. Next up, E.J. Dion on the moral whole of Mitt Romney's lies and his budget. Another big-time CEO gets caught advising his employees to vote Romney or else. That story ahead. And a new study out of Ohio shows America just how racist the state's anti-early voting effort really was. You won't believe these numbers. State Senator Nina Turner joins me live in studio. If your hair is on fire, you need to act like your hair is on fire.